Hi, my name is Chris Nielsen. I'm coming to you from the iCafe studios. This is part five, the final part of our Movie Maker uh, review tutorials from our live training sessions. In this section, we're going to talk about picture in picture effects, multi tracking video, having two videos play side by side, which is not something that Movie Maker can do natively. But we can trick it into doing this by utilizing some of those transitions that have video fly out of the screen and then freezing it part way through so the video continues to play. Um, so those XML transitions are provided for you on this website. They're the grid transitions. So you want to load those into your TFX folder. And then let's talk about how to actually use those. To get started, the first thing that you're going to need, you need some non-video to, to start your video transition from. So we've got a simple, a simple black still image that's going to allow us to start that picture in picture effect. So we're going to put our black image first and then our video second. Let's go ahead and switch to our timeline view. You notice that the black picture is not very long, like five seconds long, while our video is almost 10 seconds long. So we need to make the black image long enough to contain the entire video. And what we want to do is we want to, I'm going to zoom in here so you can see it a little better. We're going to take the video, click and hold, and we're going to push it into the black image. Now if you push too far, they'll flip which one's in front. So you want to come right to the edge and let go. You will lose the last two or three frames of your video. So make sure you have enough extra lead out at the end. So now I have a transition that's black and it's actually going to slowly fade into my video. But that's not what I want to do. The fade is the default transition. I instead want to change my transition to one of my grids. So if I come down into my transitions, I have these new transitions. Grid bottom left, bottom right, top left. So I'm going to choose top left I'm going to drag that transition down. And now what's actually happening is my video is transitioning to the top left. It's actually just going to start in the top left corner and stay there the whole time. You cannot preview these transitions. Movie Maker has no idea what to do with a frozen transition. So it won't preview it for you, but it will render it. So let's go ahead and save this movie file. I'm just going to accept all the defaults here. And it's going to render this movie file here pretty quick. And then we're going to preview it together. So here's my video. And my, my video is now playing in the top left corner of the entire video rather than full screen. So. And you saw at the end, it jumped to full screen. Remember, the last two frames or so aren't part of the transition. So here's what we can do with that. So we're actually going to delete everything from our timeline. And we're going to import the video that we just rendered back into Movie Maker. So I'm going to bring this video back into Movie Maker. This is the one with the video in the top left corner. And now I can grab a second clip. And I'm going to push this clip all the way into my video. And I'm going to apply a different transition. For this one, let's apply the grid transition top right. Again, I cannot preview this. But let's go ahead and render it. Again, I'll just accept all the defaults. And we're going to preview this together. What we have now is two videos playing side by side, top left, top right. We could continue this process of re-importing the video into Movie Maker, and we could put something in the lower right, lower left. You could create your own Brady Bunch title sequence. It doesn't have to be four quadrants. You could modify the XML to shrink it even further and create a grid of nine. Um, you could really have a lot of fun here. The trick is that you can only do one at a time. So you have to create one transition, render the movie, and bring that movie back into Movie Maker and start again. So each time 
you're going to want to render at the highest quality settings because you are going to lose some quality each time you do this. But again, you're editing in Movie Maker. So your final product is probably not something that's going to you know, air in Hollywood. It's a student project. It's something you might be sharing via YouTube. So you want good quality, but you don't need to be too concerned about rendering it three or four times. Um, it, this allows you to do a lot of those things that Movie Maker isn't capable of doing on its own that a more expensive editing software like Premiere or Premiere Elements can do but you may not have access to those things. So really what we're what we're doing here is not to say that Movie Maker is the best video editing tool to do these things in. What we're trying to do is give you a resource where you didn't have one. If you don't have access to a high-end video editing program, Movie Maker is more capable than it appears right out of the box by creating those XML files, by layering your video, by creating those overlays, you can accomplish quite a bit in Movie Maker. Thank you for sitting through our five review tutorials. I hope these have been helpful to you to remember our live session. My name is Chris Nielsen, signing out of the iCafe Studios.